After the escapades of the other day, this is my brand new Tyrannis, which is the Tyrannis Plus. Um, oh, I've cut my fingers. I was doing, I was undoing a can. It was actually a tin of beans, uh, not beans, peas. That was it. And I could only undo half of it, so I thought, I know, I'll lever it up. So I started levering it like that, and it was like that, and I slipped. And the <laughs> anyway. Um, the only difference between the Tyrannis Plus and the other one uh, that I can see, or well, the only difference is, it's got the new sliders on it, which are much better, which I actually installed on my original Tyrannis. Uh, it's got black um, thumb pieces on the end of the sticks. It's got haptic, haptic feedback. Um, and also inside, I've done the speaker mod, which I did on the other one, but also on the inside, um, it's got ribbon cables rather than, you know, the flat ribbon cables rather than fly lead cables. But apart from that, I can't see any difference. I don't know if anybody knows any difference. Anyway, back to the build. Now I've got that bloody things. I had problems with the X8R, which I don't know where the rest of it is. These are X8R receivers, FreeSky. Um, I got all the control surface and everything else, all the controls working fine, but I couldn't get telemetry working. Uh, this here is the smart port um, connector. Now I couldn't get it working at all, and I don't know why it wouldn't work. I'd set the inversion, the signal inversion, because these are actually got an inverted telemetry. Uh, I set the inversion to on in iNav. I followed all the instructions that people have written, and I still couldn't get telemetry working. So what I've had to do is, although it's still in a bloody mess, I've got GPS there which is actually connected to UART 2. I can't connect it to UART 1 because that's shared by um, the USB. Tidy this bloody thing up. Right, well, I'll do. Um, I've got a D4R2 with the PCB antennas to improve the range. Um, I've got a telemetry cable that goes to soft serial 2 which is pin, is it 7 or 8? That's pin number 8. So the telemetry on here, which is... Where is it now? Yeah, it's that pin there, it's the very end pin. That one goes to soft serial 2, which is pin number 8. Um, the GPS I've moved over to UART 2 purely because that's now at 115-200B uh, board rate and that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the servos on there as well to make damn sure that that all works as well um, and then I'm going to finally I'm going to put the OSD on just to see if that works. So I've got all the servos they go to what is it? Uh, three, four, five, and six. Three, four, five, and six on there, like that. So I've got my rudder, which both go the same way, which is the correct way that they're supposed to. I've got my elevator, which is again, it's the rudder servos, and they both go opposite ways, which is the way that they should do. And then I've got my ailerons which do both go the same way, but one should go up, one should go down, but then again those servos are actually inverted aren't they, so they're facing each other like that. It'd be sort of like that wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know yet, can't figure it out, I'm old, I'm stupid, there you go. And also the stabilisation works on all you can see the yaw working on the yaw servos and then if I tilt it this is only stabilisation it's not is that right? which way is front? so that's that, that way is front 
So that's the roll servos working, and then you've got the elevator. Sort of. So I know that's working now. The GPS is working, the receiver's working, everything's working. So now I'm going to port the OSD in. I'm going to figure out where the hell I'll put it. Um, then I'll come back again. Got everything working on the OSD. This isn't how I'm going to have it. Um, but anyway, it's just a test, everything's working. Uh, low volts purely because I haven't got the battery connected to it yet. But you can see the satellite count, it's got the GPS location, the altitude, direction to home, oh, that's the altitude, one of them two, and the airspeed and the flight time. And if I move that, you can see the artificial altitude moves and all the servos move. So, what I'm going to do now. Actually, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Yes, what I'm going to do now is fit it in the plane. Well, I remember, this is an ACE32. Obviously, this is a USB port. This is the TX and RX pins which go to UART1. Now, usually, what you have to do, if you want to use USB, you have to unplug the, the UART1 connector because it's shared with the USB. But... If you get a single, um, I think that's 100 ohm resistor, and I did actually document it, and you take it off the Naze RX and put a resistor in line, and then that connects to the Aramax or the Minimo SD or whatever you want to connect it to, you don't actually need to disconnect it purely because what happens is when you apply power to that, the, the, the signal power um, overpowers then the Aramax or the Naze or whatever you want to, uh, sorry, the Aramax or the Minimo SD. So if you fit that resistor, you just don't have to unplug everything and you can still use UART1 for your OSD. Does that make sense? This, obviously, is a mini Talon or the fuselage anyway. Now one of the problems with this cradle is, number one, there's no bottom to it. Uh, it's just there purely as a structure to stop the centre from squashing in when you put the wings in and you know. Anyway, obviously I don't like these because every one I've done, I've done my own cradle. Um, but I've done another one. Because if I wanted to put the naze in the bottom on my, like the vector cradle that I did, you can't get to the connectors very well because the USB hang on. you can see the direction that it goes that's forwards so if it was in like that the USB will be on the side so it's very very hard to get at if it's down there so you'd have to have an extension or a hole in the side so what I've come up with is this thing here so what you do is you've got the side piece that you print out and if I can see what I'm bloody doing that, that goes in there like that so this will make it very close to the top if I can do this without falling off so that goes in there like that so you can see how close to the top it is now the good part about it I can then put the naze there and I should be able to get access to the USB connector and all the other um, things. That's why I've put 90 degree thing and I've just noticed that's going to catch on the... Oh, bollocks. Well, that was a bit of an oversight. Um, what I hadn't done was giving it um, enough clearance so as these um, 90 degrees are actually cover the canopy clear the canopy. These are the original ones, um, the new ones which I'll show in a minute are a lot lower. So as you can see it's now virtually at the top. So you can see how close it is so it should give clearer access to all the electronics and everything else and the CG isn't going to be affected by it. So now the canopy should fit 
down properly. So, if I can get this apart again. So as you can see, uh, that's now in place sort of thing. Um, the original one is quite a bit, in fact it's not much. It's probably only about half an inch. Yeah, it's just half an inch lower and all it was just, just to cover or clear when I can get it. Clear the naze because that was actually uh, touching the canopy but it's not anymore. Uh, this thing, the shelf itself, you can glue it in or leave it loose but I think I'm going to be gluing it or I might put some bands around it just to hold it in place make sure it doesn't come out. So, yeah, it's level. So there you go. That actually makes it a hell of a lot better now because I can mount that on the top and I've still got access, sort of, or a lot better access to the USB connector. GPS, I know, was working before, but it's now wired up and hopefully you'll be able to see the red flashing the rapid red flashing light on the naze which means it's got a GPS lock and also that LED is flashing there. With this build, I know I've already done two builds before, two build videos, uh, I've decided to go with um, weight in mind with everything, uh, trying to get it as light as possible uh, because I'm putting the naze in here obviously so that's mega light anyway. Uh, the only thing that I think that you can't avoid is things like EMC shielding. Obviously you've got a great long uh, motor wire here, uh, which is best to shield it to stop any radiation coming out and affecting your GPS, because mine's going to go on the back here. Now, with these things, obviously you've got to have either long uh, motor wires or a long, ES, um, a long battery wire. It's always best to use long motor wires um, because there's less current draw on them and also it can affect your ESC with voltage voltage with voltage spikes and you get a lot less a lot more loss through the battery wires than you do with that. Hopefully that made sense anyway. Uh, with this stuff, with the, the EMC shielding, this is basically slug tape which is much cheaper than if you go on eBay and do EMC shielding tape. Uh, all I've done is wrapped it around the cable and it's earthed as well. There's actually one point on here which you can't see, it's on the underside. I've soldered a wire that goes to the negative side on here because otherwise if you don't earth it, it just doesn't do a damn thing. All it does is it stops radiation from getting in if you earth it, it also stops radiation from getting out of that, that um, what's basically known as a Faraday cage. So make sure you earth it if you do run it. So that's that. Um, I don't know what to do next. I keep looking at things and think, right, I'll do that. No, I can't do that because I haven't done that. And I can't do that because I haven't done that. And then I get back to that and I can't do that because of that. But... Oh. That's all glued together. That's come out absolutely fantastic, actually. Um, there's no no gaps, no nothing. It's perfect. Um, you've probably already seen my uh, brilliant hatch mod. You just don't need any uh, don't need any clips. That's it. Simple as. The bloke who invented this this hatch mod thing should have uh, an OBE. <laughs> anyway, that goes in there. I'll put the I'll put the plans down in the in the description for these things. You know, it's just it's not very easy to actually get it set up, uh, but it makes this a hell of a lot easier. Quite literally, like that. So the next job, I'm going to put the shelf in and all the electronics in it. This thing is weighing a lot less than. Any other one I've built? This is actually the third one I've built so far. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put the shelf in there and then I've got all the, the wiring up of all the bits and pieces to actually do. 
servo wires. Right, I'm going to do that now. Am I the only one who spends more time actually trying to lay things out than anything? I've got the nays and everything else there. I'm going to put an LC um, filter on there. Um, the VTX, I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Uh, the u backs going to go roughly round about here. Well, obviously in there. But I also want a platform for the uh, run cam to sit on. I can put that on the back there. Or I can face that back there, that's not a problem. No, I can't. Yeah, I can. Maybe on the canopy. Don't know yet. Or I can face that back there, which will give a backward view if I want to do that. But I don't know where. So I can't use that platform. Where the hell am I going to put that? I can't put it there because of the GPS, because it will interfere with that. And also the back end is the receive and the front end is the transmit. I don't want to put it on the front there because that will obscure the view of the run cam. Oh, decisions, decisions. I might have to put it in the side and have the antenna coming out of here. I don't know. Or I could have it here. <laughs> well, I was going to have a dedicated uh, flight cam. Brand spanking new. This is the Foxy uh, HS 1177, I think it is. Uh, but I've got a bit of a problem. I can't put the VTX and everything else in the, it just doesn't fit so I'm having the run cam as the HD record and the flight cam as well which is going on here which I've redesigned this this is my modular uh, two-part thing um, it's simply got some slots cut out there you put your velcro on and this is actually held in place as you see it doesn't come off that's actually stagged um, it's, it's drum I think it's made for drums to dampen the sound on drums anyway but when you put it on there obviously that's for added security so that's going to go on there that's going to go on the front there the VTX is going to go there uh, receivers at the back so there's plenty of separation there that's going to be after. That's going to have to be how I have it. That's going to go on there, and then that's going to be under there, and the antenna is going to come out of here. And then, if I want to put another cam, I can put it on there, and you won't get a lot of that thing because it's only going to stick up about this far. I wanted to put it in the bottom, but I can't. Anyway, that's how it's going to be. So I'm going to do that. I've got all the wiring done, it's all sorted and everything is absolutely working perfectly. Uh, obviously in the air is going to be a different story. Um, this wire here is just for programming because it's a bit hard to actually get the USB um, cable in there, so rather than take it out. In here I've got an LC filter, um, just in case, because I've got some, so I thought I'd fit one, which you can't see. In there there's a the U-back which you can't see. I'm just going to roughly go over the wiring but what I'll do is in the description which is down there I'm going to leave um, a link to all the wiring diagram and all the instructions. So what I've got is the elevator servos which are those two there, the right elevator which is this one goes to channel 5, the left one goes to channel 6 the aileron servos which aren't actually connected at the minute the right one which is this one goes to channel 3 and the left one goes to channel 4 the GPS which is there goes to UART 2 which is those pins there um, uh, the RX on the GPS goes to pin number 3 and the, the TX on the GPS goes to pin number 4 but yours might have different um, different pinouts um, that one is a strange GPS. I think RX goes to RX and TX goes to TX. Um, 
and on here you can just about see it that's where the D4R2 goes which is there and the antennas come out there on the Aeromax which is there um, these pins on the top all they are is uh, that one's got no connection the next one's got goes to the Naze RX which is it goes to UART1 and the next one goes to TX uh, does it? yes and the next one is the 5 volt from the UBEC to power it and then on the bottom all we've got is camera um, receive and camera transmit one goes sorry one goes from from the flight camera to there and then the other one goes out to the VTX and that's it as far as I can figure out where's that one go oh that's the battery battery monitoring the the voltage monitoring the current sensor which is right buried underneath it you can't see I couldn't get the current sense working on the naze so I've had to connect it to the um, Aeromax and that one's connected to one, two, three, the fourth from the right, which is in the destructions, the uh, the current sensing thing and everything else. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't work. It was three point three volts. I know I measured it, but the naze wasn't just wasn't accepting it. But it works on the Aeromax. So I've now got current sensing. I've got voltage sensing through the naze. So that will give me telemetry back to my Tyrannis of exactly how, how much voltage I've got anyway. And then on screen display it shows me how much current I've got. And that's it. The ESC I had to take back out again because I had a problem with something else which wasn't related to the ESC. But me being me took it all out and thought it was that and it wasn't. Oh it wouldn't arm that was it. <laughs> and it turns out the nose was knackered. So that's why I had to replace it. And that's it, it's all done. So what I'm going to do is put the wings on and test it. I decided with this one that the um, the best thing to do is put the battery Velcro in the front um, after I've actually built it because it's probably going to be the hardest part to get, get it in there without it sticking to something on the bottom. So what I'm going to do anyway, um, I'm going to put the wings on, do the CG with everything mounted on it and everything and then I know where to put the battery and then I can stick that to there like that and then, you know what I mean, do that. No, don't know, put it, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. As usual, I can't show you it all because it won't fit on the screen. Um, it's all done, there's the front, there's a wing, there's the back, canopy, hatch mod, whatever you want to call it, oh come on, the only thing I've had to do is um, a battery extender because I didn't I didn't have that long enough for that battery to actually fit in the front like this. So the battery goes in roughly about there. Um, believe it or not, sorry, emails. Believe it or not, the CG, the battery's actually got to come right back on this one. The other one, um, it was tail heavy and the battery had to go right, very, uh, right up the front. But now that is just between the servo wires and the spar. Um, I haven't attached the wings yet. I'm not gluing the spars in. I'm not gluing the wings on. The only thing I'm going to do is the clamp that's underneath. There's just no need because if I want to get the wings off again, I can do. And if I want to get the spar off again because I need to take this out, then I can do. So there's just no point, I can't see, gluing the wings in. But that's done, it's ready. The next thing you'll see of it, face down, in the dirt, in a lot of pieces. Sort of beanbag filling territory. <laughs> what a lot of people don't know is this is my face. This is what I actually look like. That is my face. 
Anyway, if anybody wants um, wants me to cover anything in particular, wants me to go over uh, specific parts, drop a comment down there and I'll cover it. Um, it's been a learning curve for me, a massive learning curve. Uh, iNav has actually got um, all the stabilisation you'd possibly need. It's also got um, return to launch, it's also got um, auto launch, it's got absolutely everything that you possibly want out of a flight controller at a fraction of the cost. So it's not easy, believe me it's not easy to get it all set up because usually everything is sort of plug and play but this definitely isn't plug and play. Um, but it's worth it's worth trying. Just get all the bits and get them laid out on the table, and and you know experiment with it. What you got to lose? I can't see. Oh, f hell. I'll, I'll get all the rest the the uh, the. F f f f f f f <laughs> now you with the you f with my stupidly crappy bloody explanation because I don't know what the f I'm talking about. No. Oh, Oh shit, I'm still recording. So that's made that a hell of a lot better. A lot of the. A lot, a lot of the <laughs> well, that was a bit of an oversight of mine. Hell. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Why can't I get it right? It's just a simple explanation for sake. Actually, I can. No, I can cut the. Oh, f off. This is the ESC. Why am I pointing? It's obvious, you dickhead. Oh no, it's not. No, sorry, it's not. It's on that side of the current sensor. So, is it? F oh, I nearly got it right. No, I got that right. I need, oh, f I finally got all the, this is a, the, the uh, bollocks, where is it, oh, f you've got 5 volt, sorry, you've got, oh, fuck, but it wouldn't, I can get the voltage, the batch, f Current. Oh, I don't know why I do these instructions. I really don't, because I'm I'm shit. I'm probably one of the worst people to actually explain things. I can build it. it takes me a while. Who the f am I talking to? Oh fuck! Before I finish, uh, if anybody wants any, want me. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Because before it was down here, I know it's only about an inch, but you know, an inch matters, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> it does for me. <laughs> oh God, I didn't say that. <laughs>